Yo, what's up everyone? It's your boy Dark King here and welcome to the first gauntlet guide for Spellbreak. Today we are looking at the Toxic Gauntlet, the first of six unique gauntlets, their own spells, their own sorceries, their own timers, and their own properties. Each, each gauntlet interacts with every other gauntlet in its own unique ways. Today we will be looking at how the Toxic Gauntlet interacts with every other gauntlet, the differences between the damages on each rarity, and the difference between the mana cost on each rarity. Let's get into it. The basic structure of the Toxic Gauntlet works as four unique projectiles that each leave puddles on the ground. Each one of these does a set amount of damage. They can add up though, so hitting all four, such as this, does a lot more damage than only hitting one, such as that. The dynamic that this creates makes the Toxic Gauntlet a very good gauntlet at very close range. If you can stuff people, or as people like to say in other shooter games, barrel stuff people, I, li I, like, I, I like gauntlet stuff because it stuff in a witcher gauntlet boy <laughs> is a much better strategy than trying to shoot people with the toxic gauntlet from afar as you can see each projectile spreads out more and more as the damage gets different it's not too far but when you're hitting a small body especially a body like that as you can see even that missed even though my crosshair was right on it I hit two that time but attacking people like this with the toxic gauntlet is much more effective the sorcery for the Toxic Gauntlet will take a little bit of time to master and is a little bit more complicated than just spamming some poison. It looks as follows. It is a big poison cloud that does 4 damage per tick and, inc and can interact with almost every other gauntlet in the game. The Toxic Sorcery can be used for some pretty good situations, however, these are usually situational. When people are camping behind trees, rocks, pillars, or even in castles such as these, using the Toxic Gauntlet will cause them to move, and you can then exploit that movement with some damage from your other gauntlet or from the toxic gauntlet. The difference between the mana cost between each rarity. The mana cost for the common gauntlet is 20. Uncommon, 18. Rare, 16. Epic, 15. Legendary, 14. You always want to pick up the best rarity that's available to you. This game is rather intuitive and will automatically pick up a rarity that is better than the one you currently have. So, if you just press F, it'll automatically pick it up. You don't have to switch it out. Even if you're rocking two of the same gauntlet, it will switch out the least rare and then the second least rare. Now, I'll be going over the damage for the Toxic Gauntlet. Each unique projectile, as I stated before, has its own unique damage number. These damages can add up. I'm going to be going over each unique damage number for each rarity and then the amount of damage you'll do when you hit all four projectiles. The common Toxic Gauntlet does 11 damage with one projectile. Uncommon, 13, Rare, 14, Epic, 15, Legendary, 16. So, do some quick maths for you. If you hit all four with the Common Gauntlet, you'll do 44 damage. Uncommon, 52, Rare, 56, Epic, 60, Legendary, 64. As you can see, there's a pretty big difference from com Common to Uncommon. But as you go up the rarities, the, di the difference becomes much, much smaller. However, the difference between Uncommon and Legendary is rather big, so always try and make sure to pick up the most rare gauntlet whenever it's available to you. The damage differences between each rarity for the gauntlets does not change for the puddles that the gauntlets leave behind. They will always do 5 damage per second while being stood on. Legendary or Epic. The rarity of the gauntlet you get is kind of determined solely by chess. However, the Scavenger class will help you find additional rare items will highlight items to give you a better chance of finding the your desired rarity. Now let's get into the interaction between the Toxic Gauntlet, all the other gauntlets, and gauntlets I would run with the Toxic Gauntlet. These are only suggestions though. The first interaction we'll be looking at is between the Toxic Gauntlet and the Lightning Gauntlet. As you know, the Toxic Gauntlet leaves puddles that do damage when stepped over. The Lightning Gauntlet can be added to this by using the Lightning Gauntlet right on these puddles. Walking over these puddles does not make other players unable to jump, but it does make them unable to use spells or sorceries. The spells of the lightning and the toxic gauntlet can interact, but so can the sorcery of the toxic gauntlet and the lightning gauntlet. If you use the toxic sorcery to make a poison cloud, and then use the lightning gauntlet on it, it'll send out a pulse, Then, when players get too close, they become shocked. However, this does not cause players to take more damage while inside the lightning cloud, only to become shocked. The next gauntlet interaction we'll look at is between the Toxic Gauntlet and the Wind Gauntlet. The spell for the Toxic Gauntlet can interact with the spell for the Wind Gauntlet as follows. You can make a small Toxic Cloud that imitates the Toxic Sorcery. 
The Toxic Gauntlet Sorcery interacts with the Wind Gauntlet spell in a rather strange way. When you, when you use the Toxic Sorcery and use the Wind spell with it, it makes the Toxic Cloud go away. This is a very good defensive move if someone is spamming Toxic Clouds at, at you and you're using the Wind Gauntlet. The Wind Sorcery interacts with the Toxic Spell and the Toxic Sorcery in the exact same way, so I would advise using the Toxic Spell as it only costs mana and you don't have to waste your Sorcery. The Wind Sorcery is as follows. When you use the Toxic Spell on it, it now becomes green and poison-like. However, this effect does not last for very long. What it does do, though, is increase the damage that other players take while they're within the Wind Tornado. The next gauntlet interaction we'll go over is between the Toxic Gauntlet and the Stone Gauntlet or rather I should say, the lack thereof of an interaction. The only real way to use these two together is to use their sorceries at the same time. You can use a Toxic Cloud Sorcery along with the Stone Sorcery to not let players know that you're about to throw the stone at them. However, the Toxic Sorcery and the Stone Spell don't interact at all. The only interaction between the Toxic Puddles and the Stone Spell is that the Stone Spell makes them go away. So similar to the Wind Gauntlet, you might want to use the Toxic Spell, the toxic spell on the ground against someone else who's using the Toxic Gauntlet as a defensive measure. Moving on to one of the more common gauntlets to run with the Toxic Gauntlet is the Flame Gauntlet. This is because their sorcery and spell work quite nice together. The Toxic Sorcery, as you know, makes a poison cloud. When you use the Fire Gauntlet, it creates this wide array of fire that does 20 damage per tick, which can be devastating to players that are unaware that it's coming. The Toxic Spell can also be mixed with the Fire Spell for a similar effect. When you use the fire spell in the puddles, this creates a smaller area of effect, but a similar damage output. Moving on to the last gauntlet combination, we have the toxic gauntlet and the frost gauntlet. This is also one of the more common gauntlets people run together because the frost gauntlet is a very long range gauntlet, as you can see from that shot. It can hit people from very far distances, and as I stated before, the toxic gauntlet can be devastating at close range if you hit all four projectiles together, along with surrounding people by puddles that they must step in. Here's how the, these two gauntlets interact with each other directly. The Toxic Sorcery can be used along with the Frost Spell to freeze. This creates a wall that people can't get around, so you can wall off players' movements and then it can become much easier to hit them with the Frost Gauntlet spell. The Sorcery spell interaction is the most prominent interaction between these two gauntlets, as the Puddles and the spell have a very strange interaction where the ice just freezes over the Toxic and it cannot be used. but it, the ground stays frozen as it normally would when usually using the Toxic Gauntlet. The Ice Sorcery can't really be used with the Toxic Spell or the Toxic Sorcery because it is an instantaneous spell that is used to freeze opponents. However, this can go very well with the Toxic Gauntlet in the, during battle if you freeze your opponent and then hit him with some toxic stuff. Fuck. The last interaction between the Toxic Gauntlet and the Frost Gauntlet is one that causes these puddles to linger for a very long time. When using the Frost Gauntlet, it covers the ground with ice, and when using the ice, the Frost Sorcery, a similar thing happens. As you might have seen before, when we use the Toxic Gauntlet on this ice, it has much more range and lasts for much longer, as this has lasted for like 40 seconds or something. Even when the ice melts, you can still use the Toxic Gauntlet on this water, and the area of effect is still increased. Now we'll be going over the gaunt- fuck. Now we'll be going over the necklace that goes with the Toxic Gauntlet. This is called the Infected Gauntlet. What it does, as you can read from the description, it increases the size of your poison puddles by 100% and puddles set movement speed to 50% of the original amount. So this game can be used to trap players, especially early game or at close ranges, to slow them down and not really cause them to be able to move. If you're behind them, they can't move back, so they have to move into you which is great for the Toxic Gauntlet, because it excels at close range. And last but not least, we'll be going over the class that goes with the Toxic Gauntlet. This is called Toxicologist. The passive ability makes it so that targets you hit lose 5 armor every 5 seconds for 15 seconds. This makes it so that you can rip through people's armor. If you hit them with 4 different projectiles, they can lose a lot of armor over 15 seconds. However, this is kind of strange as a combination with the Toxic Gauntlet, because usually you're using it at very close ranges and in a very bursty way. The Bubonic Bounce 1, as you can see, causes an extra poison cloud to appear and cause the poison cloud to bounce once. The Spreading Sickness makes targets take additional damage from your attacks, if they have no armor. This goes very well with Corrosion because they lose armor rather quickly. 
Banishing Mist makes you immune to poison clouds and gain stealth for 3 seconds when entering one. This is one you'll want to get more early game, because when you use your poison clouds you don't want them to be affecting you too. Now let's get into the upgrades for these scrolls. Spreading Sickness 1, we already know, makes enemies take additional damage when they have no armor. When this becomes upgraded, you'll switch scrolls. However, the order in which you get scrolls at the beginning and you switch scrolls is rather random, so don't depend on getting something first. However, if you get Vanishing Mist over your other scroll, and you're really bent on using your Toxic Scroll the most, make sure you get this first, because as stated, you don't want the Poison Clouds to be hurting you as well. Vanishing Mist 2 causes you to gain stealth for 6 seconds instead of 3 seconds. Spreading Sickness 2 causes targets to take additional 30 damage, and Bubonic Bounce 2 causes the Poison Cloud to bounce 2 times and leave behind 2 extra clouds. As you can guess, the third ability causes this one to go to 40 damage, Vanishing Mist make you gain stealth for 9 seconds, Bubonic Bounce 3 makes the Poison Cloud bounce 3 times and leave behind 3 extra clouds. Now, let's look at these abilities in action. As you can see, Toxic Bounce 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Well, it actually bounced 3, but 4 clouds were left behind. If you use this with the Ice Gauntlet, you could cause a whole wall along a specific path and make sure no one enters unless you want them to. Now let's look at what happens when we enter this poison cloud. As you can see, we go invisible. The timer near your mana bar tells you for how much longer you will be invisible. 2, 1, boom. The less effect is kind of hard to see in practice mode and can only really be seen with another player. See, you can't really, uh, you can only really test it out when it's just a dummy. So, if you really want to know what it's like, jump in there and have fun with the Toxic Gauntlet.